Disclaimer. Please check your playback settings. Ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed. Unless you want us to sound drunk. Then play at half speed. Thank you. Okay, guys, thank you for coming here on such short notice. We are really shorthanded right now, and we could definitely use the help. Oh, yeah, yeah, no problem, um, uh, guy. We could use the extra cash. So the job is simple today. I just want you guys to go through and begin sorting each one of the uh, bodies by their P date. Yeah. This way, if they're sponsored, they're no, he's a key <laughs> <laughs> you go. Shut up, shut up. I'm trying to listen. He's explaining what we're supposed to be doing, and I don't want to miss it. I think you just did. What? So, you guys have any questions? Nope. 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 We're good. Nope. nope. Yeah, good. Um, actually, sir, if you Okay, could... so who wants to run the management console? Oh, me. Me Got first. You. Damn it. All right. You guys know what to do. I will be in my office. Let me know if you have any questions. Okay, since I'm in charge, you guys go get account W33B5. Oh, that, that sounds good. I'll get this one. Wait, no, 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 no. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, Dan's not in charge. Oh, really? Well, if I'm not in charge, why am I on the terminal thingy? Go get the account. He's got a point, Josh. Okay, boss. I'll start the process and we'll get this moving. No, stop. Don't call him boss. It's going to go straight to his head. His ego's already big enough as it is. Too late. It's confirmed. Dolling him out. He's not moving. Yeah, he's dead. Let's just refreeze him and say we couldn't get to this guy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on one second. We're supposed to sort these guys, remember? We can't afford to look incompetent on our first day. Yeah, we can. Yeah. You're right. Just stuff him in with this other guy. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, there we go. Look at us being productive on our first day on the job. Yeah, they might find a cure for that in the future. So who wants the next one? No, no, no. It's I'm my turn charge. on the computer thingy. You Dan, will move. listen to me. It's I'm, I'm the one on the computer. No, computer. Just, get just, just, you know, let me find the account there. Nope, nope. Right. A five five H zero one three. Fine. Yeah, that's right, bitch. You do as I say. What now? Tom said it. Oh shit! It's it's just ahead. Where's the body? Tom, what did you do? What, what do you mean? What did I do? I didn't do anything. I just pushed the button and you just opened the door and everything. Uh, just <laughs> Tom, I think you broke off his head. Maybe we could just freeze it back and nobody will notice. Yeah, the, they they might find a cure for that in the future. <laughs> it's not fitting back in, guys. It's not fitting back in. That's because you have the head on the wrong shoulders. It's. <sighs> Let's just shove him in the other pod. So what are we doing wrong here? What are you doing wrong? Yeah, you're the one in charge. You're the one on the computer thingy. Yeah, but you're the ones fucking around with it going derp, derp, My derp, turn. here I push the buttons and... <sighs> yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. Are you troubled by a strange Sylvester Stallone in Demolition Man in the middle of the night? Do you experience feelings of Grandel Bush in Maniac Cop 3 in your basement? Or Robert Davi in License to Kill in your attic? Have you or your family ever seen a spook, Spectre, or Timothy Dalton in The Rocketeer? If you've ever followed Joe Polito into The Crow, then don't wait another minute. Pick up the phone and call the professionals. Ernie Hudson in Ghostbusters Afterlife. We're ready to believe you. This is it. The final chapter of Season 2 of The Fire Pit. The Marshmallow Man March to the Afterlife. Step on through to the other side at firepitpodcast.com as Dan, Tom, and Josh take you towards the podcast's final and inevitable resting place. Ghostbusters Afterlife. It's spooks, specters, ghosts. And it's here every Tuesday at The Fire Pit. We're ready to believe you. Good evening, bots and listeners, and welcome back to the Fire Pit. I'm Dan, British name Nigel, and welcome to episode 86. Holy crap, 86. The first episode of Journey 12, the final journey of season two. 
that's surreal to say in a sentence. I, I know I wrote that down, but saying it out loud is wow. I kind of feel like I'm an old man now. I, I know. I like, we just started season two. How can we be on the last journey? Right? Yeah. And speaking of which, man, we got a heck of a journey in store for uh, everyone. Uh, make sure you listen to Selection Section 12. If you haven't actually listened to it, well, you, you need to listen to it. But uh, we're calling an audible on one of these films in case you missed it. Um, Josh was duped. Duped, I say. Fuck you, IMDb. And I'll let him explain in a moment, but we do hope you enjoyed Rocky, but we're marching to the afterlife now. And as per our rules, we've taken an actor or actress from our last film and moved them onto this one. Now, to give us an idea of what we're watching and who we're watching, I'll find Josh one credit for a violation of the verbal morality statute. Fuck you, Dan. Fuck you very much. Josh here, British name Reginald. (laughs) And before I mention tonight's film, I do want to go back and kind of touch on what Dan said. If you didn't hear our editorial in uh, last week's episode. Um, Yes, next week's episode will not be Tom Cool. Because that movie, while it exists, doesn't actually have... it, It exists, it just doesn't... It was never released. The real so Tom Cool a, was the friends we made along the way. Yes. <laughs> so apparently that movie was made. Um, the r- distribution rights got shuffled up, messed up somewhere. So this, from my understanding, is a production company owns the distribution rights, but they don't know they own the distribution rights. So the movie never got released. And having seen the trailer for the movie, I hope they never find that box. I don't know. <laughs> Mila Kunis was in American Psycho 2, and she bounced back from that. So, and that was yes. released. And that she plays a released. hooker. So apparently, there's unreleased. There's there's footage from the movie that was released. But anywho, I threw some names into the algorithm, and they punched out. The, the algorithm actually gained sentience, and it was like, no, 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 no. This is the movie you're watching. There was other options, but this is the one. It's like, it's like, no, no, no. Unless you want me to go Skynet. This is the movie you're watching. So to prevent Armageddon, that was the Groundhog's Day parade to Punxsutawney. Um, we're watching Maniac Cop 3 next week. Woo-hoo. But Yay. But that's next week. Tonight's film. You know, a couple weeks ago, we wrapped up the Marathon to Poundtown. Still love that name. With 1976's Rocky. So tonight, we get to kick off our Marshmallow Man March into the Afterlife, Mensa, and follow Stallone from the start of his career to literally the peak of his career in 1993's Demolition Man. Now, now to give us a bit of a rundown on this film and some notes on the production, I'm going to find, Tom, two credits for a violation of the ethical morality statute for being Tom. Two credits? What the fuck is this shit? Balls to you, sir. But thank you, Josh. Tom here, British name Thompson. And as mentioned before, tonight we're watching Demolition Man, starring Sylvester Stallone, Wesley Snipes, Sandra Bullock, Dennis Leary, Nigel Hawthorne, and Taco Bell. This movie puts Stallone in the four Pete category. What four movies were those guys? Um, I I can't remember. Mythics. (laughs) The greatest movie ever made. Some people call it Tango and Cash. But it was clearly uh, mythics. And Rocky. Rocky. And this one. The one where he's a construction worker. Yes. Construction man. Yes. Pretty sure that's not how this movie's gonna work, but we'll find out in a second. This also has Sandra Bullock and Wesley Snipes joining the The repeats. No, say the line that I wrote. I don't wanna. You're the one that coined the phrase, you idiot. Do it. Yeah. You're the one that coined the phrase. You wanted a catchphrase. This one's yours. And Sandra Bullock and Wesley Snipes joined the two Peters with <laughs> Speed and Demolition Man and Art of War and Demolition Man. Or as a sane person would say, a repeater. Yeah. <laughs> a sane person did. <laughs> Tom wanted a catchphrase. Life found a way. This movie had a release date of October 8, 1993. So... We're not too far off from what you say it was, the 28th anniversary? 28th, yep. 28th an- anniversary. It's got a runtime of 115 minutes, a budget of between 45 to $77 million. That's a pretty big gap, but Josh will talk more about why. And a box office of $159 million. This movie actually made its money. Wow, that's it. I'm a little impressed. I thought this was a bomb. 
No, no, this was a hit. No, not this one. Well, of course it wouldn't because it's Demolition Man. Tagline, the future isn't big enough for both of them. Summary, a police officer, played by Sylvester Stallone, is brought out of suspended animation in prison to pursue an ultra-violent nemesis, played by Wesley Snipes, who is loose in a non-violent future society. Um, I'm going to try to change up my style on the meta to make it a little more not reading off the IMDb webpage. So if it works, let me know. If it doesn't, let me know as well. But generally speaking, um, this movie is, despite its superficial similarities to the dystopian fiction such as Brave New World, an original idea, though inspired by Lethal Weapon and the then topical news about celebrities wanting to be cryogenically frozen. You know, that's where they got, you know, they chop off their heads and put them in a separate frozen thing and their bodies in another frozen thing because that's how freezing works. Walt Disney is alive, Tom, for the last time. I guess. But that said, there is some scandal around the movie. Um, Scandal, you say? No. You do indeed say scandal. Yes. Scandalous. In Hollywood, no less. And this one involves Hollywood stealing someone else's idea and saying it's their own. In Hollywood? Never. No, not ever. This one came from Hungarian sci-fi writer Istvan Namir, who says Demolition Man is stolen from his novel, Holtak Harka, which means Flight of the Dead, which he published in 1986. And we all know how big Hungarian writing was in 1986 in Reagan's America. You didn't read it? I I was waiting for the movie version. Oh, Demolition Man, right? Of course. The Copyright Office Committee did judge that there is a 75% match, but he did not file a lawsuit. So... I mean, technically, it could be stolen, but, I mean, the idea is a good idea, if I'm not wrong. I mean, frozen soldiers fighting in a nonviolent future. I'm, yeah, I'm, I mean, the, the concept is kind of cool. Yes. Captain America did it first. Well, Captain America wasn't exactly thought in an unviolent future. True. All I know is if Disney didn't get money from Inception, because the idea literally was pulled from a comic book version of DuckTales. I'm pretty sure that uh, he's not going to get his money for Demolition Man. There's a story if we ever get to Inception. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, the rundown of this film. Um, this is a song we've heard a lot a few journeys back with our vacation to termination. Stop me if you've heard this one. A-list box office draws surrounded by, at the time, novelties and kind of up-and-comers, directed by the lowest bidder and written by the lowest bidder for Studio Profit. We've watched a few movies like that previously, didn't we? You know, if you would have explained that to me before, I would have been like, man, this is a recipe for disaster. But ask me now, I'm going to say that's a recipe for amazing, excellent movies. True. We did love Art of War. Hmm. Tom, get out. (laughs) I mean, we do have two people producing who are returnees, Michael Levy and Joe Silver, who uh, gave us Die Hard 2 and Predator 2. So we've got another pair of... Say it. Two Pete's. (laughs) Yeah, you have to say it. You are contractually obligated to say it. The first three times was fuck-ups. Every other time I after is now your catchphrase. (laughs) You don't pick the catchphrases. The catchphrase picks you. Yep. The catchphrase does pick me. Buzzinga. And as noted by you guys, I mean, we've got several four Pete's and two Pete's and an- another repeat, two Pete, Dennis Leary, who we saw all the way back in Wag the Dog. Oh, I forgot oh, about that. Oh, yeah. He was in this one. Yeah. And he was one. kind of like a novelty from the 90s. You know, that sh- shock jock, like in your face, edgy comedian that all the kids loved. So again, Bullock was the up and comer because she did speed before this, right? No, speed's after this movie. Yeah, I thought speed was like 94. Yeah, speed's after this movie. I actually have trivia about that. Ooh, more trivia. Illusions to things to come. But yeah, so we got up-and-comers and and a schlock guy. And of course, Stallone being the draw, as well as, um, 
Wesley Snipes. So again, we've got several people we've seen before, and now we're been the only new people we're getting into this are clearly guys that uh, the producer spared a lot of expenses to get. The director, Marco Brambia. This was his first film, and I think he'd want it to be his only film because the film he did after this was Excess Baggage with Alicia Silverstone and Benicio Del Toro, I, which I kind of do remember hearing about because of trailers, but even 90s, Tom was like, Alicia Silverstone in the 90s is not hot enough for this trash. And the writing team, which I'm sure Dan has a few notes about maybe in his trivia, Daniel Waters, Robert Renault, and Peter Lenkov uh, with some rewrites by Fred Decker. So yeah, welcome to Demolition Man. So now that we know what went on into making this film, Dan, do we have any trivia about the movie? A little bit, yeah. I've got some things I want to go over just a little bit before we um, move on to box office and stuff. But uh, I thought this was funny. It's not uncommon for movies to have a different name overseas because uh, the name might not translate well in their native language. So they change it to something that the natives there would um, understand. So in Slovenia, the movie's called Desolation. In Croatia, the movie's called Tough Guy. In Estonia and Mexico, it was simply called Shredder. <laughs> what? In Bulgaria, it's called Destroyers. In Lithuania, it's called All Destructive. And in Kuwait, it's called Rambo the Destroyer. Oh my god. <laughs> what? I was wondering where the swerve was going to yeah. come. Rambo the Destroyer. So do they dub it so it's like a weird like sequel to the Rambo movies? No, I don't know if they've dubbed it to a sequel to the Rambos, but I, I couldn't find any images of it. But apparently the some of the uh, box art or some of the um, uh, uh, ads or whatever kind of sort of made it look like it takes place in the Rambo universe, but it does not. It reminds <laughs> me of like these dubbers was dubbing a uh, anime film. Mm -hmm. And like they were getting paid shit. The producers didn't care. So they just started making shit up as they were recording. Ghost stories. Yes. Is that what it is? Yes. Yeah. Go on. Go on. <laughs> and it ended up being like hilarious or something. I don't know. I've never yeah, watched see, it. That, that, does, that does happen in the reverse. Like there's movies that come to America that have a different translation because the title is either well, it doesn't either translate directly to English like it should or it might even be offensive you know and it, it might even be offensive in a big way or a small way an example I can think of is um there's a Gundam series called G Gundam where yes. they had to change they had to change the jet the name to some of the Gundams because they either didn't translate correctly or they were offensive so like you know God <laughs> Gundam becomes Burning Gundam and Devil Gundam becomes Dark Gundam and the Mexican yeah. Gundam went from Tequila Gundam to what <laughs> Cactus Gundam yeah like Cactus Gundam or something like that like it's interesting uh, uh, pseudo trivia slash story not depressing. It's not depressing. But when I was stationed in England back in 2005, um, I remember me and my buddies was just out. We call it on the economy when we went shopping on the English economy. Mm -hmm. um, I was running around and I saw some DVD sales and the cover was The Rock and Sean William Scott, you know, from The Rundown. Oh. But the title of the movie was Welcome to the Jungle. And I remember I have a picture of it somewhere because I was just so like, oh, that's crazy. They named it something different than it was in the States. Mm -hmm. I actually took a picture of it and I thought that was crazy. And then years later, The Rock stars in a Jumanji sequel called Welcome to the Jungle. And I always thought that was an interesting uh Moving on. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry to step on your toes there, Nigel. Tony, <laughs> that was for you. <laughs> Speaking of things that don't translate well and um, aren't are, are kind of different how they do things over there, but originally Jackie Chan was supposed to be the villain, but he turned it down, not because he didn't like the role or whatever, but he was still doing Hong Kong movies at the time. And um, over there, it's kind of taboo that if you're always cast as a hero to play a villain or vice versa. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, like it's almost you want to be typecast there because you find regular work as a protagonist or an antagonist. It's very rare that Hong Kong action heroes or villains switch up roles. Yeah, that's interesting because in the States, a lot of the times it's all like, dude, he's played a hero so many times. It's going to be awesome to see him play the villain or yeah, vice versa. It, yeah. One uh, a more recent example is in Expendables 2. Sean claude Van Damme plays the bad guy, but he almost always plays a hero in action mm -hmm, movies. Mm -hmm. But he's the bad guy. Same with... um. In Expendables 3, Mel Gibson is the bad guy, but Mel Gibson typically plays heroes in movies. 
Except um, when he's pulled over by cops. That's in real life. I'm talking in movies. We always <laughs> they play different characters than they are in real life. But in uh, Expendables three, Mel Gibson's the bad guy, whereas he's typically a hero in um, his movies. Uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, uh, the reverse of that would be Chris Evans was Captain America, but he almost always was cast in playing the dickhead in every movie that he was in before Captain America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he was like a, uh, doing the teen rom coms, he was almost always the bully jock. Yeah, and mm-hmm. yeah, I remember um, that. yeah, and then he's that- like Johnny Storm in the original final, or he's in the original Fantastic Four films, and Johnny Storm in those movies is kind of a dickhead. Like those, that was the, the role Chris Evans always played, and then he turned around and plays Captain America. And now he's more known to be Captain America. So we want to see our actors be. Like, well, they want to see him actually act. It's, it, play the role that you think's best. If you're a villain in this movie and a hero in the next movie, it's two different characters. So, yeah, yeah. it's like it's we hate cool. seeing the same actor in the same role, i.e. Bruce Willis. Yeah. Or like Steven Seagal. I think I think he finally played a villain in Machete. But like Steven Seagal was not to play villains in any of his films, even though he's a dick in real life. So it's like that's probably but, why he wouldn't play anything other than like the hero. It's like I yeah. Well, am- he didn't want to. Well, he didn't want to see getting beat on screen. Like he didn't want to, you know, because mm-hmm. for some reason that means you've lost a fight in real life. I don't know. People <laughs> are weird. People are very strange. Speaking of roles that people almost didn't take uh, during the filming, Rob Schneider became really good friends with Sandra Bullock. Um, she was talking about her next project with him, uh, said it was some bus movie and he almost talked her out of it. Didn't think it would take off. <laughs> nope. Obviously so. Rob Schneider don't take advice from him. <laughs> so. Yeah. Do not take career advice from Rob Schneider. Hey, Hey, Hey Sandler, Adam mm. Sandler, buddy, you know, all those films you've been doing where you act, that's a total rub, man. Just make some <laughs> bullshit films. You know what you need to do? You need to go off and do a, do a movie where you're acting as something you're not. <laughs> Rob, you're not making any sense, buddy. No, no, seriously. You play a male prostitute. You can go play an animal. You can play as a teenage girl. I mean, come on. Anything. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I've got this. Trust me. Trust me. I got the formula <laughs> figured out. I'm going to be yeah. a star in Hollywood for the next 40 years. Okay, okay, Rob Schneider. I, Adam Sandler, think this is a great idea. You know, Rob, that's that's a good idea. You can do it. Hey, you look, Sandra, Sandra Bullock <laughs> is still making films, and technically so is Rob Schneider. He's good to be friends with Adam Sandler. Okay. It's just, you know, you get to make those movies with Adam Sandler and and who am I to judge? Stallone does the same damn thing with the Expendables movies. They're just action and not comedy. Yeah. But it's been like six years since we've had an Expendables movie. Yeah, but they are filming. They are filming. We've had a, uh, Oh, right. They are, but it's been like 12 minutes since we've had an Adam Sandler movie. Hey, they're old, Josh. It takes them a while to get moving. Yeah. yeah. Takes them a couple, takes them a couple of days. So, uh, (laughs) Uh, speaking of Rob Schneider, he would go on to play Stallone's sidekick in um, Judge Dredd. Again, great career choices. Yeah, great career choices. Obviously, one of the big memes of this film was Taco Bell. Um, Taco Bell was not intended to be featured as product placement. Not only did screenwriter Daniel Waters receive, conceive the idea of the restaurant wars, but he chose Taco Bell as the lone survivor because he perceived them as terrible. Uh, Dan, I thought it was uh, he wanted to do Pizza Hut. But Pizza Hut wouldn't sign off on it. No, so he, you're you're Bell. a little confused there. You're you're half right. He okay. wanted um, Taco Bell was always the chain. Um, there's but Pizza Hut wanted it. No, some of the foreign edits of the film edited the movie to make uh, dubbed in Pizza oh, Hut, not Taco Bell, because Taco Bell wasn't known too well outside of the United States in some parts right. of Canada. Oh. I knew that Pizza Hut was involved in the trivia, yeah. but I don't look up the trivia, so I yeah. defer to Dan's knowledge. I remember that now. Yeah, so if you I'm like if you watch this in England or France, Pizza Hut was du- or I mean Taco Bell lines were dubbed into Pizza Hut. That's for the, the characters to say Pizza Hut because in England and France that Taco Bell is either unknown or it's known as um, an American item or an American food only, whereas Pizza Hut is in England and France. So, gotcha. Um, okay, yeah, that, yeah. So, some, so just a uh, Mandela effect. Yeah, kind of. Huh. There's also been like there was a, a urban legend that originally like they wanted a bigger brand at the time, um, like McDonald's to be the brand that won the fast food wars, which would kind of sort of make sense since McDonald's is the biggest one in the world, but. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, McDonald's apparently turned them down because they didn't want their 
brand associated with this ultra violent film, whereas Taco Bell doesn't care because they cater to a completely <laughs> different type of market. But that's actually not Eat true. Taco food, Bell, we'll forget yeah. about it later. Taco <laughs> Bell, Taco Bell has always been the brand that was okay. originally intended, and it was intended. I'm because, just misremembering. Yeah, and it was that way because Daniel Waters, the writer of this film, hated it. Mm-hmm. So he thought it would be funny that the idea of this, at what he perceived to be a restaurant of low quality and low class wins the restaurant wars. <laughs> so, and I remember walking at the time laughing because Taco Bell, that wins the restaurant wars. Yeah, I, sure. I think some of our younger members of the audience, Taco Bell's always been a popular brand, but it hasn't been as popular as it is today. You can thank the Dorito taco for that. That was marketing yeah. genius for Taco Bell. It really was. Yes. It really was. Yes. Um, what do stoners want? <laughs> well, Taco, Taco Dude, I Bell. I want a taco. I want a taco. And I, I want, want taco. Doritos. And I want, I want Doritos. Taco, but I want it made out of Doritos. Yeah, taco, <laughs> yeah. That is an exactly. absolute stoner idea. Yeah, well, Taco Bell did two things that catered to that particular crowd that launched them into being the probably the second or third most popular restaurant chain, at, definitely in North America. Um, and that is... Yes, the Dorito Taco and two, they were open later than anyone else. And they yes. knew they were open later than anyone else. They stayed open till four or five in the morning because they knew they were they were getting the people coming out of the bars that wanted some fast food. <laughs> dude, That's what dude, they wanted. Dude, that what was if the they crowd. made a Doritos taco? What if they made a Doritos taco but with cool ranch? Yeah. Dude. Cool ranch taco. Like cool ranch Doritos. Sir, this is a Wendy's. Please leave. <laughs> So anyways, Josh, that's to answer your question about Pizza Hut versus Taco Bell in the film. AKA uh, Dan being like, Josh, sit down and shut up. This is my segment. No, no, no. It's fine. You're not <laughs> kidding, even, it was a legitimate question. So, <laughs> But yeah, uh, just my misremembering. Anyway. Mm. Um, and then the last big one I've got is um, Warner Brothers disliked the original two hour long cut of the film. Um, and they had some various behind the scenes problems. They hired editor Stuart Baird to do some re-editing. Um, like the nadir of fast food industry due to their tacky at the time advertising and very low quality food. Um, <laughs> he has his prophecy of lavish sit down Taco Bell restaurants actually has come true. Uh, the restaurant is still since 2004 test marketing uh, similar upscale fast casual locations. Uh, it's kind of sort of uh, hit a little bit of a barricade because of the pandemic and the less emphasis of dine in eating but uh taco bell plans to expand further uh and starting in 2022 of more fast casual cantina style locations so as long as they just bring back the mexi melt and the mexican pizza <laughs> and the nachos yeah I, and only if there's this uh, dine-in restaurants right yes I'm, and, I'm uh, fine with it. And keep the Dorito tacos. Do not get rid of those. Yeah. Also, the logo that Taco Bell used in this film was actually created by the film designers, and Taco Bell later uh, adopted it as their own logo. Oh, they adopted a version of it because it's not the exact. It's not one, the exact, but it, they adopted a version of it. They, they definitely t- adopted the the color scheme, right? Uh, yeah, although right now their color scheme is more of a white instead of the purple and white. Yeah, so they, they did kind of predict – Taco Bell's uh, logo, so to speak, which I thought was kind of funny. Uh, Stuart Baird might be familiar because this happened on another Sylvester Stallone movie, the greatest movie of all time, Tango in Cash, which was also heavily re-edited by Baird and others. They're, they had this whole side plot where Stallone, or, well, John Spartan, his character, meets his future daughter. His future daughter's actually living in that underground with uh, Dennis Leary's character. Oh. Um, and uh, there's some of the original footage is still seen in the film where uh, during a shootout in the underground, the woman is seen behind Sylvester Stallone as he's protecting her during a shootout. That's his daughter. A couple of scenes that weren't in the movie, but were filmed were the reveal that that's his daughter. That's why he's protecting her in those scenes. So Hmm, I'll keep an eye out for that. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that either. Release the, um, um, the demolition. Honestly, after reading some of the, what might've been, uh, from the original edit, I kind of want to see an original cut of this film. There was also a fight between Sylvester Stallone and Jesse Ventura. It wasn't that was cut. There was also uh, you don't see the helicopter pilot that he meets in the future, uh, Zachary Lamb. 
Mm -hmm. uh, you don't see him later in the film. That's because there's a scene where Phoenix killed him, but they never put it in the film. But you don't see him anymore after a certain point because he's supposed he's, he's dead. But they don't actually show him die on screen. Oh. And they don't mention his death either. So it didn't technically happen. Yeah, uh, helicopter pilot. From, from it, it, you'll see. It, it's been a while since I've seen it, too. But I think at the very beginning of the movie, there's a helicopter pilot who is piloting or who, who pilots a helicopter that, that Spartan uses to drop into um, Wesley Snipes' hideout. And then later on, when he wakes up in the future, the pilot's now an old man. He's like a sergeant. He's like the desk sergeant for the. Oh, police. the old. Uh, yeah, the old. Yeah. Black guy. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, I never even acknowledged that. Yeah, he isn't in the in later half of the movie. So, oh, anyway, for that now. yeah, I good editing, love, man. I never even thought of that. Yeah, but. I would love to see an original cut of this film. I would just, I, I would love to see how different it was if it was that much different at all. But that's all I've got for now. I'm kind of rambling, and your guys's little tirade <laughs> made it go on a little longer than I thought. But that was still hilarious. Um, I've got more as the movie goes on, but i um, curious about some box office numbers. Josh, you should have been able to find some. This movie was made after 1976, so... It was, it was. I actually do have... So, the box office. Yes, Demolition Man, as we said before, was released October 8th, 1993. It premiered at number one, pulling in $14.2 million in 2,200 theaters. Now, I'm not going to ask you the number two film, but uh, one of Dan's favorite movies did premiere on this weekend as well, starring a famous, I think at the time was WCW um, wrestler. Dan, do you care to take a whack at it? 1993? Yep. Same weekend, October 8th. WC, or then WCW wrestler? Maybe. I think yeah, it was, was it NWO was WCW, right? Yeah. Was it Suburban oh, Commando? Yeah. Nope. Hmm. Thompson, uh, do you care to take a whack at this little bit of... Uh... I'm trying to think here. It's Hulk Hogan. It's absolutely Hollywood Hulk Hogan. I'm just trying to remember. There was Suburban Commando, and there was one where he was a nanny or something like that. Wasn't was there it, not... was it? Was it like the Keep Three Ninjas pulling movie? pulling that thread, Tom. Keep what, pulling what, that thread, Tom. Was it like Tom. the Three Ninjas movie? No, Tom, Dan, nope, nope. It's the babysitter one. It's the babysitter one. I just can't remember the name. I see the the... The Mr. Nanny. Yeah! <laughs> Damn it. I could see it when he was wearing the pink tutu. He's got kids on his biceps or some yep, shit. Yep. God, that looked terrible. Back when, uh, that, yeah, yeah. I never watched that one, but I did watch Suburban Commando, and I'm not a better person for it. I liked Suburban Commando when I was tiny. I loved it as a kid. I loved it as a kid, but it's like one of those movies I don't want to go back and watch. Yeah. Just like better wrestlers carried Hulk Hogan to great matches. Better actors like Christopher Lloyd carried Hulk Hogan into a semi-funny kind of movie. Yes. But now Mr. Nanny premiered at number 12, pulling in $1.8 million. It premiered in 1,200 or almost 1,300 theaters. But Nigel, another one of your favorite movies came out that weekend. You always say we need to get to. It was uh, Gettysburg. Oh. Premiered that exact same weekend. Uh, but it premiered at number 15, pulling in $913,000. Yeah, 15? I know that wasn't a huge movie, but we do need to get to that. Although that, I'm not going to lie, that's a two-night watch. That's that probably, would be a two-night watch. It's a four-hour film, guys. It's a two-night watch. That's why it only made 15th in the box office. Okay. Yeah, people are like, hey, I want to go see a good movie. Okay, do you want to see the four-hour movie or the two-hour movie? Demolition Man, please. <laughs> yes, please. Thank you. <laughs> But uh, no, number two in the box office was Cool Runnings on its second week of release, pulling in $8.5 million. Love that film as a kid. Um, and number three in the box office was Malice, pulling in $7.5 million. Number four was The Good Son. Remember that uh, Macaulay Culkin movie where he played the villain? I always wanted to see that film. Yeah, that was on its third week of release, pulling in $5 million. And at number five, The Age of Innocence, pulling in $3.4 million on its fourth week of release. No other notables was The Fugitive on its 10th week of release at number 11. Free Willy on its 13th week of release, pulling in 1.1 million. Jurassic Park on its 18th week of release, pulling in 844,000. At number 17, Dazed and Confused on its third week of release, pulling 640,000. And 18th was Hocus Pocus, pulling in just shy of 500,000 on its 13th week of release. 
Hocus Pocus did come out that time. I love that. that wow, that's a that is a classic '90s film right there too. Yeah, a yeah, very I mean, popular movie around this time of year for some reason. Can't know, imagine something what. about it. I don't know. It's weird. Bet, lip, it's bet, something. Bet It'll come to me later. It'll. Come, it's Bette Midler. It's, it's Bette, Bette Midler. Midler. Yeah. People sing a lot during this time of year. Yep. Yeah, that's got to be. That's it. it. Yes. That's got to be it. Yep. But um, that was what the box office looked like in October of 1993. So a lot of good movies that year, but. Uh, Guess we're on to expectations now. Um, we've all seen this movie, right? Yes. Yeah, I've seen it. A few times. Oh, I've seen it more than a few times. <laughs> Nigel, what about you? What are you hoping to get out of this viewing? Do you have any memories about this film, too? Yes, I do, actually. This was the first rated R film I was allowed to take home from the movie store. Oh, nice. Yeah. So it was like... I remember it was at like the video store in my hometown and I wanted to see it. Um, I never got to see it in theaters, obviously, but I had wanted to see it. I remember the, I remember the toys because remember this was during that time of the year where bloody rated R films with lots of F words and gore and violence were made into action figures. Um, Every kid uh, during Christmas wanted their own uh, Rambo and Ro- Robocop and <laughs> Tango and Cash action figures. Right. So um, there was some uh, there was uh, I didn't have any of the figures, but I do remember the, the commercials for it. And obviously because Taco Bell was the, not the sponsor, but the the, mo- the restaurant that's featured in this film, Taco Bell was doing promotions for Demolition Man. And they had special cups that you could get with the large drink and all that stuff. So yeah. I remember the, a lot of the hype surrounding this film. A trivia, though, uh, the action figure of John Spartan was a repainted uh, He-Man New Adventures figure. Oh, nice. <laughs> of course it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, remember, we, we talked about that in... Um, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, that some of the action figures were DC Worlds of Power figures or something like that. So yeah, just really anywho, <laughs> yeah. But this was this movie was at the video store, and um, I what's a video store? What what, uh, what is oh, this video God. store? That's right. Thing? We we've talked about them a couple times before, but um, yeah, kids in the before time and the long long ago, um, you couldn't just uh, get the movie offline. Like if you could go to Amazon, watch and immediately rent it or pay-per-view and immediately rent it. You had to go to the video store and hope they had a copy and um, you would rent the movie at a video store and you could only rent it for a couple of days. And then you would come home and watch the movie and then you'd have to rewind the tape and the tape was yeah. Physical media anyways. So magnetic we've, tape. We've Not lost the all the kids. Place. They're hitting the 10 second <laughs> skip the over out. button. Yeah. Until I'm we get, out. okay. So, Anyways, yeah, I do remember this was the first rated R film that my mom let me take home and watch. So, um, and I loved it. I loved it as a kid. I haven't actually watched it in a while, but I'm expecting a fun movie. I'm actually kind of, we, we've watched some pretty heavy films the last couple of weeks. So I'm kind of hope expecting a, a Tango in Cash or a, a Days of Thunder kind of experience tonight. Like just uh let's watch Stallone and Snipes uh trade one liners and fists and cartoony violence because the fight scenes in this movie were specifically choreographed to be a little cartoony. <laughs> I'm kind of looking forward to just that. That that's my expectation. My expectation is just a tango and cash or a days of thunder kind of watch where I know it's not a great film. But after watching heavy films like Rocky and Taxi Driver, I kind of just want to see some old school 90s action machismo. Uh, what about you, Josh? You ever seen? Oh, well, yeah. You just say you see this film. I've seen this movie a lot. And uh, we have fond memories about this movie because I remember sitting down. We rented it from the video store. We brought it home because we didn't see it in theaters. Um, we're all three. Me and my mom and my uh, dad were sitting down watching it. Yeah. My brother was like three at the time. So he might have been there. But uh, I remember... This was one of my very first experiences watching boobs. <laughs> yes, that is exactly what Josh would take away from this movie. That would be the imprint. <laughs> I'm 10 years old when this movie came out. You were how and, old? Uh, I remember. Well, I don't just remember it for the boobs because there's that like one two second scene where a woman's like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to call you. And I'm like, who? What's that? And then my mom freaking out because I just saw boobs. <laughs> Never mind. We're watching a rated R film where people are getting shot at and murdered and cut throwing swear words. I saw boobs. <laughs> Love you, mom. <laughs> you cover your eyes. to make. It's already gone. Can you rewind it? <laughs> That's going in the spank bank for later. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> I think yeah. your mom was right. I think she should have shielded your eyes 10 seconds uh, sooner. We could have all been spared. 
mortified. But, uh, no, no, silence. it would have been bad. It would have been fine. It would have been fine. But my dad rewound it to check it out. It's like, guys. <laughs> You know, a lot of Josh is starting to make sense now, Dan. <laughs> a lot of Josh is starting to make sense. Spend 10 minutes with my family and you'll realize I'm the tame one. <laughs> I love your mom and dad, though. They're awesome people. They are. They are very awesome people. But no, no, I love this movie. It's one of those things where it's like every time I watch it, I feel like I pick something up. Um, I still love like just the quippy one-liners. Like remember in Last Action Hero, which I think came out around this time, mm-hmm. Sylvester Stallone was the Terminator and Terminator Two. Yes, yes. This kind of has that uh, an opposite one where they're like, it's in there. Yeah, we can look up his inf- her information in the Schwarzenegger Library, and he's all like, the what now? It's like, yeah, he was elected president, and just that back and forth, the expressions he gives, like, because you got to keep in mind, you guys don't. The younger folks here again. We're dressing you because this is all about you younger folks tonight, apparently. Um, back in the day, there was this like frenemy rivalry between Schwarzenegger and Stallone. Even though they were best buds in real life. Yeah, they were best buds, but they were they would each release back and forth and they would. It was an awesome rivalry that defined the 80s and 90s. Mm-hmm. So they were always doing quip like uh, little bits at each other. And it was hilarious to watch this. In real time at the time was these movies were released. And I love the movie. I love the pacing of the movie. Like, I acknowledge that this movie is probably not. No, it fucked that. This movie's amazing. <laughs> I think it's great. And I cannot wait to watch it again tonight. Tom, what about you? <laughs> I'm also really excited to watch this movie tonight. I don't have boob memories from this one like you, Josh. Um <laughs> Maybe I saw it on TV and that's why. I remember my dad hating the hell out of this movie. He thought it was dumb as shit. I remember watching it with him. It's like, this is so dumb. Who would honestly think that Taco Bell would win the, the be the best restaurant? This is dumb. And even kid me was like, it's a joke, dad. <laughs> no one actually seriously thinks Taco Bell is going to win the war on fast food. But I, as a kid, I loved it because it was essentially just a live action cartoon. It was goofy colors, action, explosions, Wesley Snipes knowing exactly what movie he's in and playing it exactly as he needs to. It's been a while since I've seen it all the way, with the exception of, what was it, like a month or so ago, I was... um, waiting for a movie at studio 35 um and they were yeah that's right i was going to see uh prisoners of the ghost land the nick cage film that i'm so broken up didn't make this list guys i'm so hurt <laughs> that we're not watching that movie i was waiting and it was playing on one of their tiny tvs and i was like oh my god demolition man we almost watched that movie this journey I I remember some of these scenes. I kind of hope we watch it again. I kind of want to sit down and watch this. I did not, and now I get to watch it again with you guys. Whether or not we enjoy it or not remains to be seen, because like I said, fond memories as a kid sometimes do not translate into an enjoyable adult experience. Well, definitely don't go into this movie expecting Shakespeare. Which reminds me of that one scene in, um, what was it, Last Action Hero with uh, Schwarzenegger doing Shakespeare? To be, right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to be or not to be. Not to be. <laughs> I, how awesome would that be for like Stallone and Schwarzenegger to actually do like a Shakespeare, like they spoofed and parodied in Last Action Hero? I'm Dude, honest. I oh my God. We need to start a GoFundMe to get that movie made. So tonight. much money. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're essentially doing the expendable films. They've got all the action guys. Just say, hey, guys, let's do King Lear. We're, we're, we'll keep the costumes we have now, but we'll just make King Lear like this black and white. Let's do it. Or, or I would love to see a Sylvester Stallone, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger long form sequel to Last Action Hero. Ooh. How are you seeing this in your head? Oh, totally schlocky, proper sequel to Last Action Hero. You know, Jack Slater, 12. Yeah. Now he's met his long lost brother, who is conveniently Sylvester Stallone. And then now uh, adult Johnny or whatever the fuck the kid's name is. His kid is the one who gets sent in there because he finds his dad's old thing. And then he goes into the film and brings them out. Jack Slater and John Slater. I don't know what their names would be. The movie writes itself, though. I mean, come on. (laughs) 
don't even need to write the film. It's just a hundred <laughs> blank pages. Yeah. Just do something with this. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Here's the idea. Make a film. Billions, guys. Billions. But uh, <laughs> I go- you remind when you Dan when you was talking about the toys, I went and I searched for the toys just to see if I could remember them. I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, I did the, the same thing when I was looking at my trivia. <laughs> John Spartan with like the giant shoulder cannon. I'm like, I remember that in the movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like it's this giant ass cannon that he's not holding; it just attaches to his shoulder. It's like I remember that in the movie. Yeah, yeah even the logo on the box doesn't look like the movie. <laughs> Yeah, let me look these up because I don't remember these. And oh my god! Like I said, a lot of them were um, a lot of the toys were repurposed. Um, there was a He-Man show that came out in the early '90s called "The New Adventures of He-Man," where it the, changed the setting a little bit. And he it, for anyone who wants to, because He-Man's kind of popular again because of the nef- the two Netflix shows that are out. But uh, for anyone who wants to know, that's the the He-Man you see where he's got the long ponytail because that was the thing at the, in the night. <laughs> As Grandpa Simpson would say, that was the style at the time <laughs> uh, is to give your main protagonist long hair with a ponytail. Uh, Mm -hmm. so yeah that's the he-man with the long hair and a ponytail so uh it was called the new adventures of he-man the show only lasted a season the toy line kind of flopped but um then demolition man comes out and just like with the dc worlds of power they're like hey we got all these fucking things (laughs) sitting around let's just repaint them and those are toys okay i'm I'm looking at these god the cryo claw one jesus i had a friend who had all of these i was so jealous i wanted them but i never got them (laughs) You know, there's a uh, discount toy store not far from where I live. I'm sure they've got a trash bin full of these. Oh, I don't want them now. Oof, I'm not kidding. Of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember. I do remember. Like the, I'm looking at the figure, the Simon Phoenix figure with the, the Gatling laser gun. I remember that scene in the film. Yeah, the crossbow, too. I'm looking at a figure with a yeah. crossbow here. He had a crossbow, right? Yeah, 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 I remember weapon. that one. Yeah. Yeah, it works. It tracks. <laughs> uh, but speaking of tracking, Nigel, I think you've got quiz right now. Yeah, that's what we thought about it. I'm curious to know what other people thought about it. Yeah, so, Nigel, I think you won the final quiz. So, do you have a quiz for us? Nope. Okay. <laughs> sure. But seriously, what's that quiz, Dan? Tom, play the music. Mellow greetings, citizen, and many happy returns to the fire pit. I remain persistently your interspersal host, editor, and boggle master, Tom. It appears that you have imbibed too much contraband and need to moderate your calm. A flash in the cryo-freezer for a few cycles should sort you out. But thank you for keeping cool with us here at the fire pit. We're off on our marshmallow man march into the afterlife, heading off toward the great beyond and into Ghostbusters afterlife. And what better way to start off a journey in the present than with a trip to the future? But speaking of future let's see how the team is handling their future careers presently wow i never had a group of people do so well on their first day oh my god look at all these sorted pods why is this one all dark on the inside it's one of those tinted pods yeah, you know yeah, you know yeah. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, well regardless a, you guys are doing great you're doing so great. I think it's time to move you guys on up to out processing. Basically, your job's going to be to unthaw the patients based off of their P date, you know, after their P date has expired. It's a very simple job. You just lay it out and it's good to go. <laughs> he said, he said, doo doo. And P date again. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> All right. Good luck, guys. Hey, 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 Dan, Dan, Dan. Yeah, what, what, what? We, we should we should uh, fuck with the uh, dude coming out on parole. Yes. I mean, he's, he's a criminal convict guy, so we, we could totally fuck with him, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, totally. Who said anything about them being convicts? You know, no, let's just interview these people, bring them up to speed with what's changed, and just try not to fuck this up. Okay, guys? <laughs> Are you guys even listening to me? Yeah, I mean, you tell people about the future without scaring them or something. I'm going to go find a gorilla mask. That's, I'm pretty sure. Oh, you know, never mind. It's fine. Tom, it's fine. Tom, geez, lighten up. We're totally kidding. 
So who wants to be the one to tell him about 2020? Not it. Not it. Not it. Damn it. Okay, so which account is going to be first here? It's that ah, Deb's on the terminal thingy. I'm in charge. No, you are. I'm still in nope, charge. I'm, you are it's not me, qualified. It's me. Too late. Too late. Too late. Yeah, yeah, no, we're taking account S dash one N three P. Ooh, this guy has been on ice for thirty six years. <laughs> Very well of it. Nineteen eighty five. All right, throw him out. Oh, well, how long have I been under? About thirty six years. It's twenty twenty one. Um, Corey, right? Yeah, my my uh, friends call me Tweety. Are you sure they were your friends? What? All right. So uh, if you just want to sit down, we can bring you up to speed. So it says here that Frozen came out in 2013, but you were frozen in 1985. Yeah, that was a good year. Back to the Future came out then. Uh, yeah, yeah. I went on ice right after. Did they ever make any sequels to that movie? Oh, yeah. You, sir, <laughs> you are in for a treat. So uh, what do you want to know about first? We can catch you up. Do you ever get around to making the flying cars? Uh, yes, but the casualties were so catastrophic they had to be outlawed. Dan, what are you doing? You're not supposed to be messing with him. What, I'm letting him down gently. I haven't even told him about the gummy bears yet. He's right. Just how pissed would you be if you were frozen right after watching Back to the Future and then woke up to find out they never made any flying cars? I mean, the sequel wasn't going to be out for another four years. How did he know about it? So we got to let him down gently. Well, the car does fly at the end of the movie when he... Does fine, fine. So yeah, no flying cars. What else you want to know? I uh, who won the Cold War? <coughs> the dead comrade. Josh. All right. Yeah, fuck those bastards. Da da. Well, what what about the the space shuttle that went off really good, eh? Faked by Antarctica. What, Jesus. What well, what about the acid watch jeans? I was huge into that. Oh, those were replaced with assless chaps. No. Oh my god, what about the MTV? That's still huge, right? Uh, replaced by NPR, but still shows music videos. Oh, actually, Did uh, Sean Connery ever win his uh, Academy Award? Ooh. Uh, uh, yes, but he actually passed away last year. Oh, really? That's a bummer. But now he's a ghost. Oh, yeah. The future is awesome. <sighs> you know what? You two clearly have this under control. I'm taking my lunch. Tom? What are you eating? Whoa, is that Taco Bell? All right. Where did you get that though, Tom? We've been here all day. No, I found it in one of the pods. Want some? We're, We're good. good. Bro, man, I haven't had Taco Bell since before I went under. I would kill for a Mexican pizza right now. Oh, good luck with that. They stopped serving those a while ago. What? Yeah, mm. and the steak soft tacos, too. Mm. Oh, man, not the steak so tars. Yeah, and the Mexi Melt's gone, too. What? Yeah, but they do still have the Nacho Supreme. Oh, no. No, they did get rid of those, didn't they? Oh, well. What'd they do? You all right there, Tweety? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm One hour later. And you say he was like this <laughs> when you thawed him out? Yes, yeah. he yep. was like yeah, that when he came out. Sobbing like uh, a baby. Uh-huh. Real quick, what's with all the corpses stuffed into pod six? They might find a cure for that in the future. Those were the organ donors. You were supposed to take them out and process them. You know, processing date. P date. Oh, I thought we did murders again. <laughs> Talk about dodging a bullet. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. All right, go team. You're fired. Yeah, okay. okay. Fair enough. I saw this coming. <laughs> Well, that was one frosty reception. Get it? Because they, they, they were working at a cryo plant, which deals with freezing, and freezing is cold. And if you want to make sure that your products don't go cold on your shelves, or if you have some movie ideas that are getting cold, or if you have a stone cold badass message that you want to share, then feel free to email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. That's curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Just be sure to put fire pit in the subject line, as well as what you're emailing about. Whether it's to have us share a personalized message, commission an advertisement, ask us about some personal questions, or whatever else there might be, and give us what you got. 
from there we'll read it, sentence it for rehabilitation in our maximum security cryo prison, thaw it out in the year 2030 to take out a serial terrorist bent on devastation, and never respond. Who knew that putting electronics in a freezer for over a decade would be bad for them? Chalk that one up to experience. But that email again is curtaincalledentertainmentinc at gmail.com, capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I, at gmail.com. Oh, fuck, shit! God damn it! I mean, <clears throat> it appears that someone has reversed the cryotubes and has converted this entire facility into a freezer. Joyous day! I am about to be put into cryostasis. I will let you get back to the episode. Thank you all for listening, and as always, good luck! And now to check on the team to see how they're enjoying their movie. Oh, so no subtitles again. No subtitles. The hell, it says it's got subtitles. Why the fuck isn't it loading? Nah, dialogue's not important in this movie anyway. <laughs> all right, Sylvester, just hold really still. We're going to zoom in on your pecs. Good thing this isn't a Quentin Tarantino joint. We just get nothing but uh, Stallone foot shots. <laughs> Gross. Last time, Phoenix, where are the hostages? To hell with the hostages. This is between you and me. Oh, you know the hostages are downstairs. They're, they're, they're second floor. No, they're good. Damn it, John. I'm tired of this demolition, man. What? Title drop. Star Trek sound effect. Take a drink. Idle signs failing. Subject deceased. Tracking Dr. Mostow. Oh Deceased. Do you wish to Fucking assign a coroner? Simon and Phoenix moving around like Pac-Man over here. <laughs> the cops are like, um, what what should we do? Guys, I think we need to check this out. This fire is going kind of unchecked. <laughs> Dude. This the sound effects guy was after watching this scene, they're like, John, yeah, what's up? You love the scene, right? You're fired. <laughs> That was a scene that was cut. Ripping out the eye. Yeah, it actually showed him cutting out the eye. Oh, God. I like the way they did this one. Yeah. Talk about an eyesore. <laughs> Stop. Spartan is a legend. For 1,000 arrests over three years. That's a lot of arrests. What was going on in the 90s? John Spartan? That's right. They called him the Demolition Man. Hey, name drop. Hey, he hangs dong. Stallone penis shot. All right. <laughs> Check that off the bucket list. A little bit of shrinkage there. It's cold. <laughs> you mean fluid transfer? I mean bony, the, the wild mambo, the, the hunk of chunk. Sex metaphors in the 90s were weird. Perhaps you'd like to hear an oldies station. Oldies? Oh, what a relief. Oh, this is the most popular station in town. Wild I would join Simon Phoenix's side at this point. <laughs> Seriously. Let's join forces. We'll rule this fucking place. You're going back, John Spartan. Oh, yes, you're going back. Could you two please dump some hormones? Add that to the list. Dump some hormones. Wait a minute. This is the future. We're all the phaser guns. Star Trek reference. Yeah, take a drink. Simon says please. Dreaming about killing you for 40 years. I'll oh, keep dreaming. You're dead, Spartan. Forgot to say Simon says. Jesus Christ, I love the one-liners. <laughs> I fleshed you out as some blow up the bad guy with a happy grin He-Man type. Fun fact, she says He-Man. This action figure was a repainted He-Man. And he was in Rocky IV with Dolph Lundgren, who played He-Man. <laughs> Tom looks at his conspiracy board. Like, it's all coming together. <laughs> I knew it! Officers already patrolling in a citywide crisis net. It should be just a matter of TikToks before we act. More importantly, you need to replace the word time with TikToks. That's another thing. Add that. No, TikTok's to the... already been copywritten. Ah, damn it. Oh, shit, you're right. Yeah. Uh, smoking is not good for you. And it's been deemed that anything not good for you is bad. Hence, illegal. Alcohol taxes. Um, is this 2030s or is this 2020? I like to think that this is just California, unchecked. The rest of the United States is, you know, normal. That's my theory with Mad Max, is that, like, only Australia went to shit, the rest of the world's fine. Wait, should we should we do something? Should we, ch yeah, should we check on Australia? Nah, they're fine. Magnetic accelerator guns. Star Trek sound effects. God, there's so many. I would like you to accompany me to Taco Bell. 
<laughs> how many takes they had to do for with him to take say that with a straight face. You want me to read this line? <laughs> yes, just read the line as written. It says Taco Bell. Yeah, like that. <laughs> say it like that. I was Hamlet, for God's sakes. We already have a backup plan. When Phoenix performs another murder death kill, we'll know exactly where to pounce. Great plan. Thank you. He likes your plan, Chief. <laughs> yes. I love this film. I love how men have to be draped and over that, but you know, women wearing half, uh, showing half their bodies in those skirts is, it's okay. Are you complaining? I'm not complaining. I'm just saying, like, you can't have salt, but women can dress, you know, in that. Well, salt's bad for you. Boobs are not. <laughs> Accurate. And one of the first things that Dr. Cocteau was able to do was to outlaw all fluid transfer out of societally acceptable behavior. Not even mouth transfer is condoned. This is not allowed. Oh. My God, kill me. According to Cocteau's plan, I'm the enemy. Because I want to run through the streets naked with green jello all over my body reading Playboy magazine. Why? Because I suddenly might feel the need to. Okay, pal? So is he a Republican or Democrat? He's Dennis Leary. <laughs> So, Tom, the other captain early in the 90s, I said he's made a living playing police captains that just constantly yell at people. Mm -hmm. He's made a living playing police captains that talk sternly to people, but don't yell. Wasn't he also in Shawshank Redemption? Yes. He was awarded in Shawshank. We've got a two-peat. I mean, a repeat. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> the catchphrase is catching on. On the 11th anniversary of this podcast, we're rewatching this film. Mark it down, people. And now, back to the episode. Woo! That was Demolition Man. We did not need three seashells to get through that expletive deleted. So, um, Dan, I think um, it's your turn. So um, why don't you give us a summary? Okay. Well, uh, the movie starts off in uh, the far-off future of 1998, uh, in Los Angeles, and uh, this segment died last season, and it will stay dead. <laughs> Tom, you're first up on final thoughts. Oh, am I now? Okay. Yes. Um, I didn't hate this film. Let's just say that it was you're goddamn right. Sorry, <laughs> you are now fined one credit. <laughs> Said in the past, and this just kind of reaffirms it. Some films, especially corny films like this do need time to age to really just get the pleasure of it, to just appreciate the flavor mm -hmm. of this film. It's bad. It is a very bad film. This was a comedy that nobody told anyone else was supposed to be a comedy when they were making this. Everything about this just felt like it should have been an over-the-top, like Futurama-esque farce with cart cartoonish violence that was even more cartoonish than what was happening. I mean, you had the running gag about the swearing, the um, the gratuitous farcical social commentary that was relevant for the 90s, but nowadays I don't think anyone born uh, after the 90s would really get, especially Dennis Leary's rant in the, the tunnels about wanting to smoke a cigar in the non-smoking section. Mm -hmm. What's it's a like, non-smoking section? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and so I think the film would have been a more appreciated in its time if they just went full tilt, kind of like um of uh, Swing Vote. Swing Vote was too serious, but it had elements of like a great dark like social commentary sort of comedy. This could have been that too. It just repackage itself or someone tried to force it into being an action film. So fun though in places, but not a good film. And I don't think it's one that's going to stand the test of time until we get to 2030. Then I think this one's going to see some love again and people are going to start watching it. Josh, what are your thoughts? Um, Considering that this movie is going to be 30 years old in two years and it's still awesome. I think I think it stood the test of time. Okay. Dissenting opinion. Yes. No, this movie was amazing. <laughs> You're wrong. And um, 
while it's not as good as the greatest film ever made, that is Tango and Cash, mm. it is still a damn fine piece of cinema. I love this movie. <laughs> Seriously, this is one of those movies where I'm just, I need something to watch. I'm throwing Demolition Man on because it's awesome. But yes, it was fun to watch. Um, God, everybody just hammed it up. It's like they chewed scenery as much as they could. And they did such a good job. I will watch anybody in this film chew scenery for two hours anytime. Especially Wesley Snipes. <laughs> Especially Wesley Snipes. Like, Sylvester Stallone did a great job being Sylvester Stallone in this film. <laughs> just like a sar- like all he did was he cranked the sarcasm up a little bit. Yeah, he was just quippy one-liners and mm-hmm. and standing around looking lost in the future. So it's like, it's like good job, Stallone. You got it. Nailed it in one nailed it in one take. Yeah, we're we're good. Just <laughs> no, I do I think that if this movie was made at any other time, it would be good? No. I think they did a great job of not taking it too seriously. Like, what's one of our criticisms of Art of War? It took itself too seriously. Yeah. Same thing with 21 Bridges. Mm-hmm. You know, those movies took themselves too seriously. Now, this movie, if they would have removed all of the comedic aspects to it, the comedic timing, and made it more serious, it would be in that genre of films that we put those other two. Stop taking yourself so seriously. You know what you are. You're doing a great job of it. Literally, when we say this is peak Stallone, this is peak Stallone. Are there better movies than this? Yeah. Yeah. Is other movies like funner than this? Yo, oh, yeah, there is. I mean, I'm not saying this movie is like peak cinema, but it is definitely peak Stallone. And every cliche of the 90s, this movie is it. I will never not love this movie. And... In 2032, I will be watching this movie talking about how I was there when it came out. Watching Dim Titties. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I gotta follow that. <laughs> Dan, how about you? <laughs> <laughs> the senator from Ohio abstains comments at this time. Um, I, I think I'm in the middle of you guys. Uh, you know, I recognize that this is not a great film as far as like plot and acting goes, but it is a fun movie to watch. And Wesley Snipes is a joy to watch in this film. Like he is having the best time of his life being a villain and being just an off the rails psychopath. And he's even better when he gets to the future, when the society doesn't know how to react to someone like him. Mm -hmm. That first scene where he's at that, I don't know if it's an, an ATM or some kind of, kiosk computer thing where he just beats the shit out of all those cops and then the guy's like we're police officers we're not trained to handle this kind of violence you know it's like or when he's in the um, breaking out and they're just seeing the death count yeah like they're they're trying to track him and like every five seconds another murder death kill comes off and you're like like i said he was he's going up and down like pac-man right now mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like i said he really works well when he gets to the future and the, the rest of society doesn't know how to deal with this guy it is peak stallone he doesn't really do much in this movie like there's movies where he acts a lot better like his acting in this film is well we like i said he's just kind of they give him some of the best one-liners to equip off and he stands around looking confused and he shows off his guns and his fighting a little bit but um he's not really acting in this film he's just kind of sleepwalking his way through it which is fine that's kind of what you wanted in the 90s so i don't really mind too much and and i know stallone can act they, you know we've seen move well we just watched one a couple weeks ago we watched rocky one he can he can act and I would honestly say his acting was better in Nighthawks than it was in this film. But the Tango and Cash, he acted better than he did in this film. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so like I said, it, he's there's better movies of his, but it, it's it's a pretty good 90s action movie. I still enjoy it. The movie did meet my expectations. Like I said, we've been watching a lot of heavy films lately, and I was really excited to hopefully watch a movie where I could just hang my brain at the door and kind of sit down and just enjoy it. So... Um, yeah, it's yeah. been about four weeks. Yeah, and like I said, it's it was it had that Days of Thunder kind of feel to it. it was like, oh, this movie's stupid, but it's fun. <laughs> yeah. So, speaking of um, Days of Thunder, where would you guys put this film if we compare it to like other past air quotes fun films we've watched, like Days of Thunder? Where would you rank this? Uh, I still rank Tango and Cash as number one. Oh, yeah. Easy. This is three. This is number three behind Tango and Cash and Days of Thunder. I would actually rank Tango or not Tango and Cash, Days of Thunder number one for me, just because I was having a really shitty week before I saw that movie. So it really helped. So they've got a lot of emotional fondness for Tango or Days of Thunder. 
my whole thing with the reason why I love Tango and Cash so much is because we went with that. That was a list of that was one of my lists. And at the time I created came up with that list, I thought that was the movie we were going to have to slog through Mm -hmm. because it had the lowest Rotten Tomato score of all the movies we watched on that journey. And it had like everyone hated it. And then like even when I told other people that that's what we were doing, they're like, oh, Tango and Cash is awful. And I'm like, what? Really? It's Kurt Russell and Sylvester Stallone in the 90s. How could it be that bad? Or the late 80s. How could it be that bad? I'm like, oh, no, this is brilliant. Yes. Yes. You're all wrong, plebs. So, like I said, I would... Flash Gordon sucks. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, where would you th- put it, Josh? Uh, I'm scrolling through our past films. Um, I've got to agree. It's got to be number three. Mm-hmm. Tango and Cash, Days of Thunder, Demolition Man. Honorable mentions would be like Mortal Kombat, Bill and Ted, A Knight's Tale. But I wouldn't really wreck or i wouldn't rank those i just throw those in a group and toss them up oh well i was was thinking fun action movies bill and ted and uh knight's tale i well knight's tale's kind of actiony but it's still kind of a just fun films to watch yeah but no like i do like this movie but you know it's funny is i'm thinking about it i'm like rob schneider's character just kind of disappeared yeah looking at this thing really objectively there's a lot of editing gaffes Oh, yes. I was actually thinking about that when, like, crit- criticisms. But go on. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's there's definitely, you could tell that there was some editing gaffes, like stuff that probably ended on the cutting room floor that probably shouldn't have. Like, that perfect example is, like, uh, their, his friend, what's his name? The helicopter pl- pilot guy. Zach Lamb. Yeah. We got no closure with that guy. Yeah. Like, he was there, then he was gone. And, like, to be fair, I never even thought considered his story arc until yeah. now the, the the last time you see him is right before they go into the sewers he's yep. he's with them when right before they go in the sewers but he doesn't go down with them and then like he's supposed to have been killed when simon phoenix emerges from the sewers which is why you don't see him again mm-hmm. so, yeah mm-hmm. and i kind of understand why they did that because they probably didn't get any closure with john spartan being like finding his friend dead i bet you they didn't have that written they're like well if he doesn't get any closure it's the scene does nothing same thing with his daughter. They probably didn't have any closure with that scene. So they're like, why introduce her to not to leave it open ended? Or it doesn't impact the plot at all. It's not like mm-hmm. she gen- then joins or it like affects him emotionally. Um, yeah. and, and that's another thing that kind of like to add to that. Just like there was really no emotion. Or th- there was no time to allow him any emotion in this movie. So it's like he did have that scene. I had dreams like my of my wife was pounding on the ice. My wife's dead. But he didn't feel like he was a person. He was just a G.I. Joe character. It's like, he no, was. we don't care I mean, yeah. about... Yeah, or any of this stuff. No, just, you're, you're supposed to fight the bad guy. Just go do that thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, wh- which one of you guys, I think it was Dan, pointed it out that like, there's no exposition, right? Mm-hmm. Like, which we've was- had no exposition. And honestly, I think the movie, for what it is like i said if it would have taken itself more seriously i think that would have really been a detriment to the film i think that would have really taken away from the full effect but the funny parts were funny sylvester stallone was sylvester stallone cranked up on the sarcasm like i said it's like it's not the best food you've had but they put a lot of salt on it or it's not the best dessert (laughs) you've had but they've added a lot of sugar you're able to digest it yeah so josh salt and sugar are bad for you therefore they are illegal fuck you tom (laughs) 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 <laughs> Find one credit. But I do agree with that. And and, and in terms of going back to the, um, like, no um, I, I exposition, I, I also agree with you when, you're, when we're watching it, Nigel. I mean, it's nice that they didn't, but they did need to have some kind of hand-holding a little bit for the audience because we were just dropped in. Physical contact no isn't allowed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but if you watch the movie, like there's clues as to what's going on. Like Rob Schneider actually kind of sort of updates the audience on what's changed. Like well, a lot of his lines with the whole like, you know, we're police officers. We're not trying to handle this kind of violence. He's kind of sort of telling the audience what's changed. I honestly I really liked how they did the, the introductions to that. They because uh, it was a fish out of water movie because mm-hmm. there was a time after he got frozen. It jumped to the future. They thawed out Simon Phoenix, and then you got to see the world exist without Sylvester Stallone. So you got to see how it was thrown into chaos. Um, And then they introduced John Spartan again. And then you got the fish out of water. So it's like you were shown all of this stuff. You saw that they weren't actually holding hands or anything. And like when Benjamin Bratt and Rob Schneider did the high five, they came up. And they yeah. did like a high five, but stopped like six inches out and did the circle thingy. Yeah. It's like, so you're like, what the fuck is that? And then like you heard her cuss and then the, she got the 
tickets. Like, what is that? You had a lot of those. We're going to show you what's going to happen, but then we're going to explain it whenever the, uh, what does what Tom like to call it? The audience surrogate, AKA John Spartan shows yeah, up. Yeah. yeah. And I like that aspect about it. It didn't, it was, uh, it was just like show and tell. Yeah. Because know? one thing, I, one, one trope I really hate is when two characters that already are living in that universe start talking about things they should already know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it'd be like me telling Josh, well, you know, Josh, like we're just having a conversation. I tell Josh, you know, I tell him about his job. Like, and I perfectly describe Josh's job to Josh who does it every day. Mm -hmm. Like, I hate that trope. Like, I really hate that trope. So to me, if they would have just gone to the future before Spartan and Phoenix were um, thawed out and the two cops talking to each other, it's like, well, there was a big earthquake in 2010 and we rebuilt our society and now we have this like utopia, like they're explaining what happened to mm-hmm. people who already know what happened. You know, it's mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. it it makes no sense. And I hate it with a passion. So I'm kind of glad they stayed away from that until until this audience surrogate comes in. And then Spartan's got to be one asking, like, how the hell the damn three seashells work? And then he gets fined for cussing for saying damn and all that. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's like I keep thinking way that they, they could have done it, which would have sucked. It would have been like um, her and Benjamin Bratt's character. She's like. Well, that well, you know, damn him, and then it's like the thing goes off. You'd be like, oh, I really hate how we get fined every time we cuss. I'm not. They just want to start swearing, not be fined for it. No, I agree. It's like it just it happened. We see it, and we get yeah. introduced. She didn't to even it. react to it. She's just like, mm. oh, whatever. It's and she's supposed to kind of be the audience surrogate because she's the one with kind of the connection to the '90s. But I compare it to Futurama when a uh, Fry is thawed out when he sees the future. It's a big moment whereas this one we see the future and it's sandra bullock driving in a car right and yeah and, and i i get what you're saying but i'm just saying i like i said i just really hate when two characters who live in that universe are talking about that universe about mm-hmm, shit they should mm-hmm. already know yeah you mm-hmm. know and i agree with you on that one that that was nice it was the small things as you said as we watched this movie the, the attention to detail the universe that looks like a universe that is a future but still kind of familiar mm-hmm can we talk about um, Taco Bell and how we look forward to the, the day it wins the the, the wars? Go franchise Taco Bell. Wars. I mean, I'll be honest. If any franchise is going to win, I, I, I'd be okay if it was them. Yeah, I mean, any any uh, franchise that embraces a Dorito taco, that's yeah. just... Yeah. They're going to win. Just Yeah. Win. So if, if it was... If it's any franchise that's going to win and be the only restaurant available, I mean at least the only fast food restaurant available and then transition into fine dining. I'd be okay if it was Taco Bell. I mean, you can know, you imagine a world like if, if Applebee's was the only place you could eat? Oh my God. Oh God. Jeez. Why? Can you imagine the end of the franchise war? Taco Bell is going to be left and McDonald's is going to be standing before him saying, I am inevitable. And then suddenly yeah. you're going to hear on your left and out comes the Mexican pizza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Best timeline, please. <laughs> on your left. <laughs> oh, I still love this movie. I'm never going to not love this movie. It's a guilty pleasure for it sure. Is, it's yeah, definitely, it's a definitely a guilty pleasure. pleasure. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but I've said everything now. <laughs> so do you guys like the boob scene? And that's it for tonight's show. As a reminder, you can find us on Fire Pit Podcast. Oh, wait, wait, I got a better one. I got a better one. No. Did you there see are Sylvester links to Stallone? Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, Tom Buchan. There are links to Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, or wherever fine podcasts are sold or bartered or traded or whatever it is we do with these those things these days. Our regular episodes are Tuesdays at 6 p.m. usually. Please like and subscribe to whatever medium you choose. We really appreciate it as it helps us out. And please leave a review. Uh, when you leave a review, especially a good one, uh, when people will search uh, information on this film, we will show up in searches, especially on uh, Amazon or iTunes or Podbean. So if they're looking up Demolition Man or whatever movie we've reviewed in the past, if you've left reviews, we'll show up in the searches. So please leave a review. And uh, to all our new Podbean followers, uh, if you leave a comment, we will happily read those as well. We appreciate you following us. And I know you probably aren't on iTunes where we get a lot of those reviews. But if you do get on iTunes, leave reviews there. But if you leave us a comment on Podbean, we'll read those as well. But if you want to chat with us, you're more than welcome to join us on our Discord channel. The link is in the episode description, or you can find us at discord.me slash firepit. You'll get notifications of new episodes. You can get on there and chat with us. We're on there all week. We're up for chatting. We'll answer any questions you may have about an episode or just in general. And also other fans of the show 
Dan- Matt and Danielle are there. Rob is there. Pretty much all of our guest stars that have, we've had have, are on there and they like to chime in every now and again. So we invite you to join us there. Also, you can email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. I believe a very sexy voiced individual mentioned that back in the interspersal. Go back and listen to that again if you want. He does such a good job. But you can also like our page on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at FirePitCCE. Both are linked in this episode's description as well, along with every other thing that we link to that we can possibly link to. And uh, I would, of course, like to shout out Peggy, the OG friend of the channel. Uh, I would also like to shout out another OG friend of the channel, uh, Rob. Congrats on your wedding. It was a blast. Uh, Hope you're enjoying the honeymoon. Take some time out to listen to our show, though, because, well, we knew you first. Uh, but shout, shout out to Rob and also a special shout out. We had a new disc, couple new discord followers or uh, people that joined us. I noticed uh, somebody joined the other night named uh, Bofa or Bafa. I don't know how you pronounce your name, but uh, uh, when you join in, say hi, introduce yourself, wave. Uh, we're trying to get the discord uh, really busy. So when you join up, uh, say hi, introduce yourself, uh, whatever. <clears throat> I'm done, Josh. That was an abrupt stop, Dan. <laughs> I'd like to shout out my friend Nick, who uh, well, I would have shouted him out last week, but he we hadn't released the Taxi Driver episode by then. But he uh, he enjoyed our Taxi Driver and Rocky episodes, and he sent me a book and text messages. Apparently, we need to do is we need to, if we have any movie that involves New York in the 70s, we need to call his dad. Because his dad was a taxi driver in New York in the 70s. <laughs> oh, my God. God, we could have absolutely have used him for the taxi driver episode. So, yes, um, he offered his dad's services to kind of cut in and have questions. But, uh, Nick, I do always appreciate the feedback. We really, I really appreciate you listening. And, uh, and I really appreciate the text messages. It's fun to talk about it with you there. That's my abrupt stop. <laughs> We're all doing abrupt stops. I've stopped today. heard it a trend today. And from my end, I'd like to shout out a couple people. First, I want to give thanks to Danielle and Matt for joining us on our Rocky episode, which was our journey finale, our marathon to Pound Town. Appreciate it. Thank you for joining on. We had a blast. Also, I'd like to shout out two of our followers. One of our Facebook followers, McCauley, and one of our latest Podbean followers, Gorsi. Both of them join the growing numbers who tune in, like us, favorite us, listen to us. We've got a few likes on a few episodes, too. So whoever's giving us those thumbs up, keep that going. We like it. Uh, so whether you're starting on later episodes or God help you, if you're deciding to go all the way back to the first episodes, we appreciate it. And we thank you for keeping the fire pits burning. Why would you do that to yourselves? Don't. Yeah. yeah. There's, don't. there's a disclaimer for a reason yes. in those yeah. first five. There's nothing Please. there. Don't embarrass us by listening to our first episodes. Listen to a bunch of our newer episodes and then go back and then you can make fun of us. And if yes. you do have any questions about those early episodes and why we aren't fa- fans of them or just questions in general, please send us an email or you know shoot us a message on Discord because the end of this journey is also the end of season two. We're going to have two mid-season break episodes. The first one's just going to be a retrospective, but the second one is going to be a Q&A session. So we will answer any questions that you may submit to us between now and then. Yeah, so get those thoughts in, those comments in, if there's anything you want to know about, anything that's just you want more insight on, like what was our favorite episode, which was like the most challenging one to record, you know, anything else, just yeah, let us know. We will do our best to answer. Yeah, we have a previous Q&A episode from our last season break, and it was a lot of fun. And if you go back and listen to that one, some of the questions that you may have, if you're a new listener, may already be answered in that one. Hmm. But um, Feel yeah, free to just, ask them again. We'll answer yes. them. You, sure, why not? I, I love explaining the story where the British names come from and all that stuff. So yeah, just drop us a line, leave us a question, just however you got to do it. Um, and uh, we'll get to it. Like I said, we had a lot of fun doing the Q&A last time. Yeah, I can't yes. believe we're already coming up to the next one. Season two coming through. Man, yeah. six more episodes. Where has the time gone? Holy crap. No idea. But 2021 went by a lot faster than 2020. 
Not in the bad way. I will no, take yeah, not that. Not way. That's good. Yeah. But, 2020 uh, could have gone faster. But just, you know. That was the longest five years of my life. But speaking of longest. Well, yeah, we went, we had a frozen cop this week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So next week we're going to have a uh, different kind of cop. A fire cop? Earth cop? I think it's um a water cop. <laughs> oh. No, no, wait, no, no, because he was frozen. So he was already was water. He was an ice so- cop. It was an ice cop, so he has to be a wind cop. Maybe it's a samurai cop. A super cop. Yeah, as long as he's a stable cop, you know, we don't want any maniacs running around here. Right, right. Yeah, you don't want that. Okay, but- Definitely not. Especially three of them. Next week, we're watching Maniac Cop 3. <laughs> we have no idea what to expect. More on that next week. <laughs> yes. That was my abrupt ending. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, until then, I've been Dan. I've been Josh. And I've been Tom. Thanks for listening. This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. Stay safe out there. Welcome to Taco Bell. What can I get for you? No. Why do you get to be on the register thingy? I've got more experience with cash registers. Oh, would you two stop? We got fired because of this. No, we got fired because you kept double stacking the bodies. Oh, hey, it's you, the new guys. How you doing? Hey, it's Twitter Tweety guy. They hired you? But you were frozen for like 30 plus years. Hey, they're hiring just about anybody with any kind of experience here. Some about birds or Mexican bears. I don't know. So, uh, you're not supposed to be at the register. None of you. So, uh, you two. Me? Yeah. Me? Mm-hmm. You two need to go clean the shitter. And, uh, you need to put Mexican pizza back on the menu. Yeah, we actually can't control the menu like that. You have to call Taco Bell, but then you have to speak to the corporate office. And so it's like, I can't really just add it back. I don't there. care. I just... Get a shoppy, write it on the menu, get it done. Okay, boss. Sounds good. Why is there a head in the toilet? <laughs>